Um, just to give you a brief overview of me, I'm Gareth Spencer, I'm a BIM consultant. I work for Greytech. Greytech are a global organisation. We're a reseller. Um, I'm based in the UK, but we have uh, other offices around the world, obviously in the States as well. Um, we don't just sell software. Uh, from Autodesk, we do use Autodesk software, but we also sell software our own. Okay? A couple of our guys who are just sat in the front here, Carl and Joseph, have been demonstrating some of the tools we've got, um, which will automate the reinforcement design. Now today is going to be about the basics, okay? So using the basic tools, but with some tools that we've added to improve how Revit works, okay? I'm going to talk to you like a bit of a story as we go through. So um, we're going to start from the beginning and work all the way through to the wonderful three-dimensional Revit um, modeling, okay? Um, as we go through, um, I'm going to tell you how I, I feel about Revit and how I feel about reinforcement detailing. But before I do, um, I thought I'd actually Google and see how we can make it more exciting. And the first four things that came up were these here. So I thought I'd spice things up a little bit with the rebar cookbook. <laughs> Secondly, I thought, well, let's make it a bit hotter so we'll actually look at how we can increase the heat of an oven. Then there's Frommer's Guide to the Hitchhiker's Guide to um, Canada. It's not a good really, only got two out of five. And also, if anyone's looking for a new job, uh, reinforcement and iron worker in um, Eastleigh, South Carolina. But then again, it was three months ago, so they probably filled that position now. I'm not going to bore you too much with what we're going to cover, because obviously you'll hopefully see that throughout the course, or through the class, I should say. Um, but we're going to look at it from the traditional 2D method all the way into 3D, okay? But we're going to use three-dimensional modeling tools like Revit for that. But also some wonderful third-party apps that we've built, and obviously there's other things out there as well. Um, so if anyone who's downloaded the actual um, document which I put together, the class notes, you'll already see the objectives in there, and there's quite a few bits on the screen. But we're going to look at how the basics work and what sort of things you can do with it and how you're going to create a nice, wonderful three-dimensional model rather than just the 2D details that you would normally do. Um, like I just said, obviously, you can download them from the website, so please feel free. Um, one thing that I will say to you is we all want feedback. I'd like to know how I'll get on after this course, so please leave your feedback once you've finished. Um, hopefully, all positive. If not, I'll lock the door. Um, just one thing, you know, we're in Vegas. Everything happens in Vegas. It stays in Vegas. Well, it doesn't really. But please feel free to tweet, put everything on the app, social media. You know, it's great to get the name out there and actually talk about reinforcement rather than, you know, just do it. Okay. Um, so, like I said a minute ago, I'm going to go through a little bit of a story first before I actually get into the detail. And so, we're going to produce three dimensional elements with rebar in them, a fully reinforced concrete frame. Okay, I'm not going to do a complete frame because we've been here for weeks. But we still can produce the information as in two-dimensional drawings and bar bending schedules can send to the, uh, the fabricators to bend the steel. So before I start, I just want to get a, a glass of what the room is. Um, where are we all from? Are we from the States? Anyone from the States, obviously? There should be quite a few of you. Anyone from Europe? Yeah, we've got a few. Any far afield, Asia? Great, so hopefully you can understand how I talk. I, you know, I, t I come from a place up north in the uh, UK called Manchester. So people try to talk really fast, so I'll try and slow down a little bit for you. Um, so job roles, what kind of job roles have we got? Have we got people here who are engineers? Got some engineers here? Yeah, cool. About CAD managers, BIM managers? Yeah. Any people who actually do the work? Drafters, technicians? Any architects? No, they're not willing to put their hands up, are they? <laughs> um, what about how do you normally do it? Does anyone do it hand-drawn still? No? Anyone use CAD? Yeah? Anyone use CAD but other versions of CAD or add-ons to CAD? You had one or two? What about 3D detail but not Revit? Okay. Does anyone use Revit yet? Wow. Hopefully, that if you do use Revit, I'm using reinforcement in here. Is anyone using reinforcement yet? No? Thank goodness for that. <laughs> right, okay, so we're going to start from the beginning. Um, I thought I'd, I'd take this to look at how it's come over the years since we first started using reinforced concrete, okay? So, did a bit of research, and obviously, uh, Francesca, uh, sorry, Francesco was the first person to obviously introduce reinforcement in the 19th century, and obviously did a building over in France. But back then, they wouldn't have had any form of reinforced concrete detailing like we have today. So whether it's 2D, whether it's 3D. So if you think about it, 
Most people initially would have had one of these. They might have even had one of these. And if the older people in the room might know what these are, okay? So the young people in the room, there used to be a place called a drawing office. And we all sat at desks and we drew things by pens and pencils, okay? Now I know most of you now have got phones, iPads, you name it. But back in the late 70s, mid to late 70s, we moved from a drawing board to things called CAD, okay? Now I'm not old enough to have done it proper in industry, but I know about it, okay? So it should have improved the way we work, okay? Most people probably didn't. We probably stayed on hand drawings for a long time. Um, but one of the reasons why we would have done it, you know, we would have asked ourselves a few questions. So did we do it because we had to? Did we do it because we wanted to? Or did we do it, did we do it just because? It wouldn't have been one of those three questions. It would have been more like, it was there to help us to increase our productivity, maybe even the quality of design. What about faster drawings? Okay. And then finally, the efficiency of how we work. Okay. I don't know about anybody else, but when I look at something, I look at something new, I always look at how to make things better. Okay. Not that it's super duper and it'll do everything for me, but if it's going to improve how I work. So I look at it this way. I'm going down the single path. I'm, I'm here with my little pen and my pencil. I'm walking down the current path. 2D detailing comes along, so CAD. Have a look at that. Oh yeah, I'll actually take that route. Possible, it's going to be useful. One thing that wasn't available was certainly 3D detailing in the past. Okay? It's only as of recently, in the last probably 10 years, that this sort of tools have come available in our industry. So if we look at it, hopefully it's going to go through, yeah, okay. The outcome, if we did go down that route, would it be that it did improve those four things that I said, and probably many more, or did it actually open any new doors, or was it actually a waste of time and money? Or did you carry on just doing the same thing you did before, as in 2D drawing by hand, okay? So we look at it as the pros and cons. Now, I'm going to put these up here, and this doesn't just refer to CAD, this really refers to both Revit as well, but if you look at it here, did it actually improve how we actually create our drawings? Are they more accurate? They should be, because we're using computers to do it for them, and we can change things a lot easier. Is it automated the process then? Possibly, yes. Is it faster? Potentially, it should be. And then, is it quicker and easier to edit? Well, if you think about it, using CAD, use blocks, you can stretch them, you can change the shape, okay? You can't do it on the drawing board, you have to scratch something out, redraw it. So, another thing, I mean, I hold my hand up, and made a mistake myself, human error. It should reduce the human error, okay? Cons, it could be possibly slower because first of all, you've got to buy new software and hardware and install it. And then you've also got to train your staff. So that's something you need to consider. And this, all this what I'm telling here should go into the Revit side as well. So when I used to produce my drawings in industry, that's something that I'd get out. That's a ground floor reinforced concrete slab. I'd write FX, FX in my drawing, okay, and then put all my rebar on top of it. Then I'd create one of them, bar bending schedule, okay. That bar bending schedule would not link to that drawing. So if I made a mistake on that drawing or I made a mistake on that schedule, something would be wrong. If it was that schedule, it would go to the fabricator, it'd be bent, the steel would be wrong, it could be wrong length. There's no way of actually getting that problem resolved other than making sure that I check my drawings thoroughly or somebody else does. So what could we look at? Other forms of CAD, okay? I don't know if anyone's used um, AutoCAD structural detailing. Unfortunately, it's now been pulled, so it's not useful anymore. But that had links to Revit. Not great, but it had links. We've got advanced steel, sorry, advanced concrete, which was bought by Great, by, from Greatec to Autodesk recently. Okay. Other third-party software. Now, this is based on the UK market, because obviously I'm from that country. But things like multi v bar We've also got Bentley and CADS RC. Now, I used one of those when I was in industry. Not great, but actually the time it spent for me to produce my information there was longer than what I wanted it to be. So. I'm looking at it this way. There are all the old ways. I'm trying to open a new door here, and that new door is using my model and producing my reinforcement in there. Okay? So what next? Well, the building information modeling came along. Okay? So we got rid of our pens and our pencils. We threw them away. We used the drawing board as a shelf, and we use CAD now just to open drawings. CAD's not redundant, but it's not being used as much because we're building a three-dimensional Revit model. So BIM, it's an uh, evolving um, subject and Revit's only a small piece of that jigsaw, but 
if you think about it, you're building a nice three-dimensional model. So why would you continue to go on your three-dimensional modeling path, but then go off on your 2D path straight out of things like Revit into another package to do the detailing by hand or um, two-dimensionally? So before I came here, I actually rang some of our clients and said to them, what do you do regarding reinforcement detailing? Do you use Revit? And do you know what? There's only five clients I asked. All five of them said no. So I was like, why do you do that? And the one question uh, I got back was, well, why not? We've done it that way all the time. So I said, why do you build a Revit model and then take your two-dimensional information out and do it in, in, in CAD, for example? He said, we've got guys that have been doing it for 50 years, not 50 years, uh, 20 years, and they're good at what they do. So I said, well, you're going down that old path. Why not try the new path? Why don't actually be the first person to go on that path? And they was like, well, how are we going to do that? I said, well, do you use Revit? They went, yes. So do you build a full detailed Revit model? And then do you use the reinforcement? No. And some of them actually said, no, because we don't know how it works. So one thing that I tried to explain to them is, unless you try something, you'll never know how it works. So that's why I come about with this presentation today. Um, one thing that I always look at is, if I do something one way, is it always right? Is it going to get me the output I need to? So this is where this, this statement here comes out a bit more. If you've done what you've always done, you get what you've always got. So, you know, sometimes it's worth trying that new, new thing. So this is why I'm actually going through this. Now, one thing that I need to consider before I even start with it is my standards. Now, I'm from the UK. We used to have uh, BS standards, which now are Euro, standard, Euro codes. And we also have our modeling, our, sorry, our modeling, our scheduling and drafting uh, standards as well. Okay, so we've got a lot of things we need to comply with when we're doing something. Obviously, if you're around the world, you have different standards. So when I'm doing it, I need to consider why I'm going to do it, first of all. Is it or can it be done? And also, what benefits does it have? So first of all, if I answer the first question, why? Because Revit has the tools built in there for you to do it. Okay? Can it be done? The answer is yes, but there's a but. The last few years, I've only really seen Revit expand and add the tools what it needs, OK? I can still create the two-dimensional information that I needed from Revit, OK? I can produce drawings and bar bending schedules with the tools out of the box. <coughs> so I've been building, you know, lovely models like this, and this, and this. But this is what I used to do. Before um, Revit was available to, to use reinforcement, I'd produce my drawings like that out into CAD and then I'd reinforce them, okay? It's not an easy process, it's quite time consuming. So I thought I'd do a bit of history on Revit. Now I've been using Revit for quite a few years, but when I found the history, Revit extensions came out in 2006, which I think is version 8, version 9, if I remember rightly. And they had rebar tools in them, but they weren't that great, okay? It's only when it came to version 2014 that you can actually put the bars in properly. Before that, it couldn't actually do the bar bending radius. Okay? So for me, it was a waste of time because I'd have to go out to Excel or another form and actually do my schedule in there, and there's no link. Realistically, from about 2013, Autodesk have really improved the way it works. Okay? They've added some fantastic new tools in, out of the box, which I'll show you. And then obviously, I'm going to show you a couple of things today. Um, I'm not going to show you Dynamo, because we'll be here all day if I did, but Dynamo is a fantastic tool. And if anyone was available on Monday in the fabrication, uh, one of the Autodesk guys, Dieter, was showing how it can work. But I'll show you some great tools with the power pack and also what's in Revit itself now and how we can do it. So let's have a quick look. Now, I do apologize. I'm going to have to sit down here, so hopefully uh, you can still hear me. So this is a um, Revit model. Okay, I've just thrown something together. This is out of the box. Now, one thing I'm going to say to you now is your template is key. No matter what you do regarding Revit, make sure you have a template set up. Basically, if this, this model here is very, very basic, so I go in the model. Now, the only thing I've done is change a few things to make things look a bit different on the view. But you'll see here, I've got foundation, I've got a column, and I also have a couple of beams. What Revit, or problems with Revit, I would find in the past is you had to always go into a section view to add reinforcement, okay? But now, we can add reinforcement in plan or elevation as well. And before I do that, you'll see um, Revit here, we have all the, the tools, okay? So you'll see, we've got some rebar tools, we can add area, we can do a path along an edge, for example, we can put fabric in, and we can do single fabric, and we even change the cover. 
We can also adjust our settings. We can go in and set the settings up for our cover. Um, now, this is a standard from the UK, from the European, actually. Um, so someone's actually sat down and put all these in. But we could get rid of these, put some new ones in if we require. We can also look at the standard settings for how it's going to display the information in here. Now, in the UK, we don't tend to use hooks, um, but we can also turn them on so we can actually utilize the tools. We can look at rounding. Okay? One thing it wouldn't do before, um, we couldn't round the, the, the bars up or down with the length of them. We can also look at how we present the information in the view. So whether we want all the bars to be shown, the first and last, or the middle, and also the same for the, our section view. We can look at how the reinforcement for area and path displays the values when it's showing them in. So if it's top reinforcement, it'll put a T. If it's bottom, it'll put a B for us. Okay, so saving us a bit of work when we're actually doing our modeling. And one big thing here is the rebar numbering. Now, what it works on is obviously we use partitions in here to actually number them. So it doesn't actually take its data with partitions from the actual element you selected. You can give it a partition number. Okay, and we can define how the numbers start. What you will notice um, as well, when you select an element, so for example, if I select this foundation here, it gives me the rebar tool options here. So if I select that, okay. Now, obviously, I don't need hooks, so I can actually just click OK here. You'll see we have the option to place it on uh, per plane, whether it's the work plane we're working on, whether it's a near or far face, and the orientation, how we place it. Okay, so it's at the work plane, parallel to cover, or perpendicular. And we can even draw our shapes ourselves in here. We can specify the set. So if it's a single bar, whether it's multiple bars with spacing, fixed number, for example, we can set all those up before or even afterwards. We can go in and choose the shape code. Now, this is using um, British standards at the moment, but obviously you can use any country pack that you've installed. So if you know all the numbers, great. If you don't, we have this little browser here, which has been turned on and off. Okay. One thing to note before I do start to place is the properties will give us the bar shape and bar mark number and all that information as soon as we start to place it. So here you can see I've got a H12, and you'll see all the information that we can see we can place in. So we can give it a partition number. For example, if we said we can call this foundation, um, it will give it a mark number once it places it. Okay, you can go in. You see the shape codes there. We can put our hooks on the end and the start. Um, one thing that I think Reddit falls down on is the visibility side. So when we place it, we need to go in here and define which views we're going to see this information in. Okay, but I'll come back to that one. We can also specify each leg of the bar and the length, okay? Or if we use Revit to draw, it will do it for us when we come into here and draw. So let's, let's place a bar in. Now I'm going to come into here, okay? I'm going to choose, for example, I'm going to choose a shape code 21, which is a, a U bar, um, as you'll see on the right-hand side here. So if I go over here, can you see it's not allowing me to place it? Basically because of the work plane and the actual settings I'm using, okay? But if I start to change, can you see here, I can go and place that bar, and it's using the cover around the element for me. Okay, so it's going to place it in. So if I change it, to, for example, to parallel, can you see it's going that way? Now I'm just going to place that bar. I'm going to go into the 3D view. You'll see the bar shown. Okay, I've drawn it the wrong way. It doesn't matter. I can simply switch it round. Okay, these are the simple tools in here. So I switch that round. I've actually drawn it as a single. Let's come in here and let's, for example, change it to a maximum spacing. And I'm going to change in this. Okay, it's not really that difficult to to adjust. You can notice that one thing, no matter if I change the level of detail from coarse, from medium, from fine, it's still saying there's a line. As I was saying earlier, if I select that, I have to go into the visibility and its properties to change things. So for example, I'm in the rebar um, transparent view here. If I turn that on, if I click OK, you'll see the information. Okay. Another issue that um, you'll need to sort out is, for example, the barbering schedule in here is very basic and needs adjusting. Okay. Because Autodesk have give you a solution, but they've not give you the final solution. So this is why I say templates need to be set up. Now, I'm not going to go and fully detail this up. I'm just going to close this down and go into a file that I've already got set up. Because this will give you a good understanding of what I'm actually trying to get across here. So if I open up this um, foundation. So I've got a simple building in here. Okay. Um, you'll see in here I've got some four pads, some couple of columns inside here as well. So if I just go to a 3D view. Okay. Oops, wrong one. I've got that one. Okay, so you'll see here, I've already reinforced one of the cages. Okay, now one thing that um, Revit is, is pretty good at is obviously he's putting information in. Obviously, it's, if I select this element here, we've got the rebar settings inside the properties. Okay, so we've got one for top, one for bottom, and one for both sides, or other sides, I should say. 
Okay. It will also, if I go into my view, let's quickly just draw a section view through here so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm draw a section view. Go in here, okay. When I go into place, let me just quickly change the scale here. So when I go in here to place a bar, okay, you see automatically it's actually picking the cover for me. So if I change the cover, it will help me. If I start to change you know, where I'm going to place it, can you see it's actually picking the cover up around the actual top of the cap, um, so the bottom of the cap, with the actual pass. Okay, so it's helping me adjust, place the information in. Now, for example, I'm going to just click and place that one. But can you see it's placed it in, it's allowed the cover, the cover will be, um, I think, 30 mil, uh, 35 millimeters uh, around that. But what happens if I want to change the constraint of that? So I said, I don't want the end point there. I can drag it, yes. But that, in itself, is manually changing those dimensions, okay? I can use the tools inside Revit, so if I select, for example, the element again and go on to its constraints, you'll see in here, there's now some constraints for the element. So if I pick, for example, Segment one, you'll see it's hopefully see it's highlighting the top. If I pick segment two, you'll see it's going to this side here, three, at the bottom, and four to the right. Okay. Now if I put a value in there and set that value, you'll see as a plus it's gone outwards, and as a minus it's gone inwards. Okay. And that's automatically, if you look in the properties here, assigning the uh, bar shape and amending the dimension for us. Okay. So we're not having to to go in there and manually do anything. What also is happening, okay, is it's added on the bar mark number. So if I go back to the structures tab here and come under my numbering, can you see it's added the information in, okay? It's added it to, for example, found, but I can always change that in here. So if I said that's bar cap two, for example, it's apply. Let's come back in here. You'll see it's automatic update. So the information is linked. Now Autodesk have added in a few tools over the last couple of years to help improve our reinforcement is. Um, and I've made highlights in the handout. But if I go into the, the bar bending schedule here, okay, this is one I've defined myself, so I've put a few extra things in here. First of all, I've got the partition which gives me the information. I've got the mark number, the type and the, the shape, okay, the number, the total, the length, and all the other data that you'll find in the schedule. They've added in these, these, two, these three categories here, host element, sorry, host category, host count, and host mark. Okay. Personally, I wouldn't use the host mark, but what that does, if I come in here, it uses the information within the family you've got here. So if I put a host mark number in, so if I call this PC2, for example, oops, you'll see that's updated that, and that should also, if I select this, okay, it should also update the, um, the mark number in the schedule. So if I go in the schedule, sorry, it's updated it. One thing I will say, I found it a bit, um, fiddly if you don't put the reinforcement uh, host mark number on before you put the bars in, okay? I've found sometimes it doesn't display them, and the only way to display them is to actually delete them and come out. Now, that's whether it's a problem with something I've done or whether it's with a template, I don't know, but that's something I've come across. So, having a schedule in here, now this is one which is correct to suit our standards, I can actually now populate my information. So you'll see create a little drawing here. So this is just a basic drawing with one element on it. Okay. All those foundations are exactly the same. So I've got my rebar in here. You can see how nicely that's laid out. Okay. But at the moment, if I go back to my other one, okay, first of all, you can't see the information. It's not there. Okay. I've got another view in here which is showing the rebar in that view. Again, I can't see the information. Okay. So no matter what I do, I'm trying to select that data. It's not there. So, yes, I can filter out here, I can go and select the rebar, go into the properties, but I'm not going to do that, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tool that we've introduced in here. So, for example, say you've got a view, and you've got all the reinforcement in. Okay, so if I go into here, I can set the reinforcement visibility. Come on. Okay. Um, using this tool, this allows me to isolate whether it's going to be um, a solid element, Okay, now that's obviously in 3D, we're in 2D here. I'm going to make it so it's um, obstructed, not obstructed, sorry. But I can also go in and select the rebar. So if I come into here, I can pick the rebar, and I can choose which ones I want to do it to. So I click Finish. Come back in here. We can also do it by a filter. So if you wanted to filter by, um, for example, the reinforcement type, so it could be a foundation, it could be a column, it could be a beam, we can do that as well. So if I simply just click OK, it's now brought it live. Okay, now I only put one in, so let me just quickly change that to... Uh, a few more, okay. So you'll see the information in there. Now, 
As you'll see, it's showing that the bar is a full entity. Okay? <laughs> Realistically, I can go in here and put it as a single line. Yes, using the tools out of the box, we can go in and we can select it and say, well, actually, I just want to see that bar in there. Okay. We can also go in and start to add our dimension in. So one thing that, that um, was a problem in the past, you couldn't really dimension up things. It was still a 2D process yourself. We can go in here and start adding things like a tag. So if I go in here and add my tag in, now you'll see obviously the scale's quite large here, so I'll just place that in. Okay. You'll see it's putting in a tag for me, which is reading outside of um, um, the actual family. Okay. So this is going to be a dimension here, okay. and that's your tag. We can also edit the dimension by selecting the dimension tool on the ribbon, or we can pick the actual tag itself, and for example, just that. So this is all it's doing, is reading tags that are loaded in. Now again, you need to set the tags up to suit your own requirements, because out of the box they're okay, but they're not fantastic. So we'd go in there and we'd go to the certain settings. Okay. So you can see I've started to place reinforcement. Okay. We can make it look as good as possible. And I want all my views, sorry, the right one, all my views to look like that. Okay. Now what I did is I set up myself a, um, a view template, so I go in here. Okay, I've set up a few, event, few templates here to make the views look right. Well, first of all, I want to get all the reinforcement into the elements. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back in here. Okay, I'm just going to delete that out. Okay, sorry, wrong view. Let's come back in here. I want all this rebar in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the tools that we've developed. I'm going to copy the reinforcement. So first of all, I'm going to select copy. Actually, let's do this in the 3D view so you can see a bit better. So you'll see here, there's, there's the foundation. And I want to copy the bar, so select on copy. Okay. Now it's going to ask me to select the element with the reinforcement in, and I can exclude out whichever bars I want in here. So I'm going to, you know, select them all. I want them all to come across. Okay. So I click on the finish. I can now click on each. Oops. Don't want to win that one. Each element that I want them in. Okay. So all three of those. If I click on my green tick now, sorry, my green tick. I'm so used to saying that. Click on finish. It's now put the rebar in all of those. It's also updated the schedule with all the bar marks. Okay, so we've got all the bars now. Because they're all the same, it's not added any of the extras in. Okay, but because my schedule has been set up, I now have a schedule which I can export out and utilise. I can print it off. But the thing is, if I change it, it's going to automatically update. That's the automated part of it. I'm not having to go out into CAD and change things. Okay, so for example, set that pile cap just in size. I'm not having to go and change the size again in my CAD drawings to adjust the reinforcement. Okay. So that's adding basic reinforcement. So what other things we can do, let me just open another file, okay, is we can add all of the data in. For example, I'm going to go into, this, into a beam in here. So I'll just show you what I've got here. I've got a beam already predefined. Okay. I've got a beam with some bars in here. I've got a beam, we've actually cut the beam back. Okay. So the reinforcement we placed in is now outside, so I'm going to adjust it. Okay. So let me just quickly go into <clears throat> a view. Okay. So if I go in, I've got the rebar in the view. Okay. So first of all, you see here, if I was to select those bars, you can see they don't fit properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tool to adjust them. So first of all, if I go up here, you'll see we can explode rebar. So we can take rebar out sets. We can split it at certain points. We can isolate and we can unite. So if I, for example, split, what it's going to do Allow me to pick a point. So if I pick here, what you'll notice now is that rebar is separate from that rebar. Okay. Yes, I could have dragged it back. Yes, I could have placed some reinforcement in there again. But this is making the tool a bit easier for me. I'm not having to change or add anything else in. What I can do now is I can set the bar to its face. So what I'm going to do is pick these bars. I'm going to hit um, finish here. And then I'm going to come to the bottom here. I'm going to set the bottom face. It's automatically adjusted it. So if I went in now, you'll see the bars have changed location. Okay, I think I actually selected those at the same time as well. So you'll see it's, it's moved the element up. Okay, so it saves us a bit of time. Um, go over, over to this one here. So what we can do as well, I, I put the rebar in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our tool here. I'm going to select the reinforcement. I'm going to start to look at the tools inside here. So as out of the box, I didn't use any solutions. Um, I can go in here and look at the stirrup or link, what we might call in the UK. We can also look at what type of hook, length, or shape we need to put in. We can look at the quantity. 
we can also look at the distribution. So how we want to do this. So for example, when I first started detailing, we just put them in at the general centers. And then obviously we start with the Euro codes. So now the Euro codes states that we could have different zones in there and we could have different um, setting out. So we can adjust the zones in here how we want them. We can even set the offset for the cover. So you define what the cover is going to be at the end. And you see here each zone is each length. Okay. I can go in here and I can change that. So you'll see that's really uh, a big distance. So if we went in here and changed that to, for example, 200. Okay. And I've just broken it. Okay. Let's go back in. Okay. So let's do that again. And spacings. I should have adjusted, he says. Isn't it great that you can break something? Okay, let's start again. Let's do the spacing. Let's do it that way. Okay, that's better. It's working now. Okay. So, no, no, okay. Well, that's not working right now. But what it allows you to do is obviously adjust the bar spacing in here. You may have um, seen tools like the extension tools that you've got, which you can go in and put the rebar in, okay, and that'll do things for you as well. If I move um, over to here, um, I want to start looking at isolating bars. So if I pick on here, for example, I'm going to go over to the uh, power pack again. I can go in and I can start to uh, isolate bars at a certain point. So if I go in here, I say I want to isolate certain bars. So I'm going to select these bars here. Um, and I can pick where I want to isolate, isolate the bars at that point. So you'll see here, I've now isolated those bars. So I could actually start moving information around. As you'll see, okay, that's a separate bar at that point. If I've done that and I want to bring bars back into the isolation, which I can do here, I'm going to go back and I'm going to unite them. So I'm going here with the tools. Okay, and click finish. Now those bars are all back to where they were as one. Okay. Obviously, those are separate, but we can isolate the information. So that's having the tools that we've got, um, <coughs> excuse me, to, to, to allow you to isolate them. Okay. Now, if I just switch back, sorry, wrong view. Let's go into another one. Let's come down here. Okay. We can start to add things like, um, sorry, wrong one. I've opened the wrong view there. Open that one. Okay. With Revit, we can add in things um, that allow us to put our um, basic path reinforcement and things like that in here. So I've got an example here. I've already put some, uh, some path reinforcement on and put some um, area reinforcement. So if we was to, to go in, for example, I can go in here and let's go back. Oops, sorry, wrong one. I can put my path reinforcement. So basically, if you think about it, you might put, um, I don't know, you might put some mesh or some fabric in in the, in the slab, but you want to put some bars on the edge to tie it in. I can go in here and I can start to uh, run a path. So. What Revit allows you to do is run the path. Now you'll see here, again, it's put it outside, but so we'll flip it back inside. Um, the only problem you've got is I've put in a 21 code in here, which is a U-shaped bar. Um, it's going to put the bar face at the top or bottom. It doesn't allow you to put it on the side here. I've got a spacing, so again, I can change the spacing in here. I can also define the bar um, shape and the length of, each, of the leg. So for example, I can reduce this down, and you'll see it all uh, edited itself. So if I come out of that now, and you'll see if I go into the plan view, you can see, again, it's put it the wrong way around. But a simple fact of just switching around by using the space bar, I can do the same again. There's the bar in its entity. OK, so it's paste that in. Again, that information can be added in. It's going to go into, for example, my uh, slab in here. So as you'll see, the bars are starting to update inside the, the uh, schedule again. I can then go in and start adding things like um, my area reinforcement. So if I go in and I start going into area, um, detail on the slab is not the easiest thing to do. So for example, if I was to place bars in, I can put bars in how I want to, but I'm going to just place in a couple of bars in here. And you'll see quickly, I can define the size of the area I want to. So for example, come here, that's five meters long. If I click on that one, let's just drag this over here quickly. So you can see that's six and a half meters long. Okay. I want to reduce that. Let's just quickly go and reduce that. So it's going to put the bars in the length that I require them to. I can define um, the major uh, direction for the top and the bottom, okay, and the minor, and change the size appropriately for them. 
I can also define the direction I'm going to. So if I click on here, you'll see it's placed them in. Okay. So I've got the bars in there. The great thing about that is I can simply copy things around. Now, um, one other um, thing inside here, so if I just switch back to another view, um, if you're placing early reinforcement in, so for example, I've got a slab here, which is on the, bay, on the floor, and I've placed some early reinforcement in. Okay? Now, I would ha have had to go and select all the edges and place that reinforcement in. What we've got here is I've got a tool, which if I, um, for example, select and pick the early reinforcement, it's now adjusted the early reinforcement to go to the angle of the slab quickly. All that information will also, for example, if I come into here, and let me just check I've got the right thing on here. Let me just check I've got the name correct on those. That would help. Let's go in here. Okay, let me just change that name. I'd obviously not put it in. So I go in here and go back into my schedule. You'll see it's put the bars in. It's give the length of each bar appropriately of that field. Okay. So obviously you can see now we've got multiple elements, okay, and there's some of the elements we've got different lengths, but some we've got the same. So it makes it uh, reasonably easy, okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. We can also then look at doing something a little bit different. Um, so again, if I open up another drawing here, um, I don't know if anyone uses parts inside Revit, okay. It's a great way for the precast um, industry to start putting information in. So for example, I've got a slab here. Let's have a look at this in, uh, in uh, 3D. Okay. So you'll see I've got a slab in here, and what I've done is I've split each view or each slab down into parts. I've then put the rebar inside that, simply straight inside each one. So, for example, if I go into a plan view, you can see here each panel has its own uh, reinforcement, which then I can schedule as well. Okay. Makes things a lot easier for you when you're working with it, so you can see the information is actually in there as you work. Okay. So, for example, if I go into this 3D view here, I've got a wall. I've split up that wall into parts. Okay. So I've got a wall there. So if I should switch to my view, okay. Let's have a look at this in a, an elevation view. There we go. Okay. So I've got my single parts. For, for example, if I click on here. I can go and add my area, I can put rebar in if I want to. So I'll go and add some rebar. Okay. So I'm going to use the outside face. I'm going to select and put them in. Okay. So again, I can change the size. I'll leave that for a moment. So I've now put the rebar in that. Okay. So it's going to quickly help me to put the reinforcement. Now, again, I've got all those elements in here. So let me just come down here and let's make parts um, transparent so you can see the information inside there. So you can see there's the rebar actually in the cage in there now. So again, I can come into our tools and look at copying the information okay, from each element all the way through. And as we go, we'll be able to put our data in there. One thing I haven't done is made them visible. Um, but it makes the easiest process to copy the information from one to the other. Now, placing other things in as well. For example, um, I've got another example in here. Um, sorry, wrong file. If I go in. Mesh. Okay. So we can place in our mesh reinforcement or our fabric, whichever you want to call that. So go in here. I've got a good example. I've created a view. In that view here, I've made it so when I place my reinforcement in as a, as a mesh or a fabric on the bottom, so again, if I select this, I'm going to go in here and pick the fabric. Now, I'm not going to just draw this. I'm going to use the actual line. So again, I'm going around the outside and picking the face. So pick the face. It's now putting the actual bars on for me. So you'll see it's placing them on. First of all, I can define the direction. So for example, if I wanted the main direction across the top, so they go horizontal, or if I wanted it vertically, it'll switch them around for them. Um, if we go into the properties, again, we're going to select the partition. So for example, this is floor. We can define the fabric size, okay, or type. You can see in here we've got multiple ones we can select. Location, I can say here I'm going to select bottom. What the splice position for the lap is, Okay, how you want that to be displayed, and you'll see on the screen as soon as you start to change that, we can change those tools. Okay. It's also got the major and minor uh, splices, so you can actually work out the lengths. Once we've done this, if I click on here, you'll see it's automatically put the information on the view. I can then go to annotate it. Okay. So I'm going to quickly annotate, so I'm going to go in here. Again, I've got the tags already defined, so if I come in, and if I, sorry, wrong one, select the tag. Uh, 
no. It would help if I did have nothing selected. Okay, so I'm going here, do the symbol. Okay, so it's annotated with the symbol on there. I'm just going to put the tag mark on for the sheet as well. So you'll see it's automatically done that. A great thing as well is it knows because it's scheduled information, so if you just find the schedule, you'll see it's placed for the bottom. And obviously if we did the same again, it placed on the top. So we can actually then populate our drawing. So for example, if we go in here, you'll see there's the ground floor plan with the mesh at the bottom, okay, and here's the one with the bottom base. Obviously as soon as we put the top in, it will do the same and update the information on the sheet. Okay, so it's going to quickly uh, do that for you. The next uh, thing we can do, you take this one a bit further, is uh, let's, go on, let's go into this one. Okay, we've now obviously placed our, all our reinforcement. In. Okay, we can then produce hopefully a nice three-dimensional model. Okay, so you'll see here. I mean, this is just the basic stuff I've been throwing in, but you'll see as the model grows, we'll start to reinforce the information. So you, as well as having the three-dimensional information in here. You've got all that 2D data. So as we start to produce, you'll start to have things like your drawing sheets with all that information on. Okay. Now this is obviously takes a lot of work to get there to get your template set up, but you'll see here, there's all the rebar for one power cap, there's another, there's another, with all that information in, okay, and displaying that. Now, as you'll see, I've I've added that extra data in here, so this is out of the box to do that. But you'll see it's actually tagging the information appropriately how I want it. If I go in here, and I want to put some more tags on. So, for example, I'm going to go to annotate. Okay, I'm going to start using my tag, um, for example, by category. So, if I start hovering over, you see it's actually placing the tag on. Now, let me just quickly place them here. See, I'm placing the tag over there. So, you'll see it's placed my tag for me. So, I'm just going to drag that, place it over here. Okay, turn off my lead lines. It's placed the tag on. That's a tag that I've I've, I've built myself. Um, you obviously can create your own versions of these different tags within there. Again. If I just simply, let's just do another quick tag for this element. I've placed it in, although I've put the wrong tag, I can simply go in and change the tag, and you'll see it automatically with the tags you've got, change to the appropriate one that you may want. Okay, so for example, I may want that one. Again, I can adjust the information within the view appropriately. So as you're doing that, it's obviously automating the process a lot more. Now, as we're doing that, obviously we're producing all this information it's in one place. It's not actually going to be in a two-dimensional element. It's going to be there in your model, so you can utilize that over and over and over again. Obviously, if we place the information in, so for example, as we've placed it in, it's in that partition. If we ever change that, we can update it. The only problem you've got is that that partition, okay, if you put something wrong in there, you'll still get it wrong in here, okay? It's not completely getting rid of the human error, but it's actually reducing it for you, okay? So you can reduce those tools. A um, couple of other things that um, you may have, or you may not have, um, I say out of the box, is, let's just go back to a plan view. Um, for example, here, I've got a bar. I may want to detail that up in the view with actually uh, dimensions and information. So let me just check I've not got uh, my view window. Okay, let's turn it on. Just make this a little bit bigger so we can see. Okay. Um, I'm going to use the detail here so I can come in. I'm going to pick that bar, okay, I'm going to click finish. So that should now, oh, graphically, uh, and I've got something turned off, so uh, model generic, there we go. Okay, so you can see it's drawn in the bar for us with the length of it as well. Now obviously if you've drawn a bar in which is not a standard shape, it will draw that for you and put the actual text on there for you. Okay, so it's helping with things like that that you need. Okay, now it's on the drawing there, so you can utilize it on, on your sheet if you need to as well. It's an easy process. Um, renumbering information, so we can go in here, I can uh, renumber data. So, for example, um, I can go in here and set the bar mark number. Okay, so it's currently four, so if I said I want to change that to 100, I can go in and change that. Okay, so you'll see now it's updated. Now, which one did I select? Uh, this one, sorry. You see there it's updated the information automatically for you, and that will go through to the schedules as well. Okay, so it's making the process a lot easier for you when you're working inside here without actually using any other tool other than what you've got. Okay, now the stuff I'm showing you here is a preview, so it's not actually available yet, but it's coming out very, very soon. Um, if you're a Grey Tech customer, um, you'll get all these tools for free. Okay, if not, it's on the Exchange app, so you can buy uh, these tools. 
Um, for those of you who've been in a class from my colleagues, um, they're showing some tools which take this even further, where it actually automates the process. So can you see here what I'm showing you is still quite slow, but it's faster than what you're doing in 2D. Okay? The only thing I'd say is obviously getting up to the speed. Now with the tools we've got here, we can actually set some of the settings so everything displays how you want them to. So you write dimension styles, your text styles, etc. Um, these tools have been developed because you know, there's not really much out there to do reinforcement detailing with Revit at this moment in time. And a lot of people are still going back to the 2D way. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I'm always looking for is to automate the process to make things easier. And obviously these tools will do that for you. Um, what you'll see, we've got some other tools at the top here which allow us to actually do things quickly. So for example, if I wanted to automate this by making a 3D view of here, of what I've got in the view, okay, what I can do is I can go to here. Now, in 2016, or 2015 R2, they introduced um, the section box inside Revit. So for example, if I select this, I can choose a view, and I can use this view to actually automate and actually make a, um, a view for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize for example, this view here, and what it'll do is it'll take the settings from this view, it will also give me an option to do a section box around that and the distance around that. So for example, if I said 50,000, it would take the box and make it 50,000. If I just said, for example, 100, it would take it 100. I can also get it to duplicate the view. That's something you can't do without the box solution. So if I click on here, it's now created me a new view. So if I just come down to my 3D views, you'll see here there's a new view. So if I go into that, can you see now it's automated that and created me a 3D view instantly. Can you see the bars aren't showing properly in the view? So again, I want to make them visible. Um, so what I'm, what I'm going to do is pick the right tool would help. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go, I want them solid. Okay, I want them uh, unobstructed. Okay, I'm going to select the bars. So I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to pick a couple of the bars here. Okay, I'm going to click on my finish. And I'm going to go OK. So now turn the bars on. It's left the bars in here, but it's turned them on. Okay. So again, it's automating the process. Yes, I can change them to coarse or medium. I can. It will display them as I wanted to, but it's now displaying them as a full 3D element. Okay. So these tools are just enhancing what you've got uh, and within here. We've got other tools in here as well. For example, I've got things like the family manager. I don't know about anybody else, but have you ever wanted to find a family and you go and searching for the folder on your desktop or on C drive and trying to find something? and you can't find it. So for example, we can map a drive on your network, on your C drive, and we can go in there and find information. So for example, in here, I wanted to find some data. I can go in from folder to folder to folder and find this information and select it from here. I can also, for example, do a search path. Okay? So if I was to type in something and start to put some name in there, it's going to bring down the actual information. It's going to allow you to bring information in quicker, find the information, because you can search by folder or by um, subfolder, for example, if you need to. Okay, so I can select the element, and here on next, it's going to list them in there. So you could have 20, you could have two, it could list them and then you can select the ones you want and then bring it in. Okay. The only thing is set up initially is actually define a location once you've done that and bring that in. Okay. We have other tools in here, but I'm not going to explain and show you all because obviously they don't relate to what we're doing now. But um, these tools are free to our great tech customers. And if you want to find out a bit more, there's obviously more on the, um, uh, on the, on the web. So I'm just going to switch back into my PowerPoint. Um, just a couple of other things to, to um, say before I actually finish up and then uh, let you go and have a drink and some tea. Um, as I said, the Power Pack, it's a free tool for all great tech customers. Um, we're trying to give something back for actually keeping with us and, and uh, being um, our customers. Um, it's on the Exchange apps. Um, you'll see it on there uh, for sale. So obviously you can buy the, the application. Um, and we're always adding to it. So some of the things you've seen today are actually tools that are going to be available very, very shortly. Okay. Um, so if you need to find out a bit more, you can go to Google and type in Advanced Power Pack for Revit, or you can go to our website and find a bit more. Okay. Like I say at the beginning, there was a couple of videos up um, going through as a playlist. On our YouTube channel, we've got them going all the time. Okay. And the new things will keep going and going and going. Um, the only thing I would say uh, at this moment in time as well is Things like Dynamo um, is something that I'm quite keen on, and you've probably seen yourselves if you've been to any classes while you've been here. Dynamo is a real good automated tool to actually utilize things that you can't do in Revit. So um, for reinforcement, there's not much at the moment, but to do other things, there is, but it's growing all the time. Okay? 
I thought I'd throw that in there because there might be some people who are interested in things like that, automating the process, okay? Um, the only thing that I will say, a few final thoughts, is um, just remember that, you know, sometimes a small change makes a big difference, okay? And I think the small change is, is using reinforcement inside Revit, okay? Now, I could have spent all day talking about this, and I'm sure you'd probably be bored stiff and you'd probably be asleep by now, but just consider that um, if you're using the tools, you know, it's going to automate your process, you can keep it in one location. The only thing that um, I heard a question earlier on today is, could you do it where you link the model in and put reinforcement in? Um, as far as I, c I can see at the moment, and I've tried this myself, is you can't, but actually I think that'd be a great tool because you would keep the reinforcement away from the actual um, main model, so you couldn't get someone just randomly changing things. But it's certainly going to help and, and increase um, productivity. So just before I finish, obviously, um, it, hopefully you found that informative and you've got any uh, questions or anything like that, feel really free to ask any now. Um, but if you could fill out the feedback form, that'd be great. Um, so thanks for um, listening to me for nearly an hour. Um, hopefully I've not bored you to death and you've not fell asleep talking about reinforcement. Um, if you do uh, want any information, um, there's some leaflets here at the front and some at the back. There's some about the power patch stuff that I've shown you. And there's also stuff about the uh, BIM designer, which some of my colleagues have been showing. Please feel free to take one uh, with you. Um, I've also left some cards for you if you want to keep in touch. And there's my details on there. So if anyone's got any questions, don't ask me. <laughs> Has anyone got any questions? I can't really show you too much with reinforcement because we would take you all day to do it. But so do you have uh, like imperial settings to like you show this all on metric? Yeah, it's only metric because I'm working in the UK. Um, our power pack has been developed, uh, or it's being developed to be used all over the world. Um, we're hoping to have you know everyone, oops, everybody using it all over the world because obviously it's a great tool. It's 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 being built there to help you. Um, but what I will say is, um, if you haven't seen the class with my colleagues did earlier today, um, what was the full name of it? So I get it right. The one you did this, this morning. This, well, not the last one. The one before that. Okay, so go onto the Autodesk website, Design Driven 3D Rebar, okay, and that takes that out of ballpark, okay. It will automate the process for you, okay. If you don't use design software, things like that, and obviously you can see you can do stuff in 2D, it is a process of getting your templates right, getting the information in the drawing that you need, or the model that you need, and doing it, okay. I was showing you the basics there. Um, you've probably seen other things on the web. You can use complex shapes and put reinforcement in there. It's not as easy, but you can do it. If you think about it, curved walls and things like that, how would you detail one of them in the past? It's not very easy. Using Revit, you can start to do these things. Right. Anyone got any questions? Anybody else? Was it that interesting? <laughs> Yes. Uh, the, you know, overall depth, that view or whatever would be shallower. Yeah. Is there ways to manage that? Um, yes and no. Um, um, I'd say quite a bit of it is more of an automated, is a manual process, not automated. Um, I think, personally, my personal opinion on, on Revit itself, it's still early days in sort of reinforcement. It's been there for a while, but not actually done anything with it. Um, cause, I think realistically, Autodesk put a lot in from 2012, 2013, 2014, and 15. Um, there's not been much in 2016 R2 release apart from what they put in from the R2 for 2015. Um, but it's getting better and better all the time. All right. Anybody else? Go on, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay, so do you saying that it was an out of box solution to copy, yeah. or is there just the Revit Power Pack? Yes. Um, there's just copy. Um, you just have to select the element and go copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And reinforcing steel is hosted by itself. Yes, it is, yes. So you have to copy the button? Yeah, you'd, well, basically, you'd have to select the, the reinforcement in that element and use copy to copy it from. from place to place to place, and it will place it in for you. The tool what I was selecting was basically saying, I'm going to select that element, pick all the reinforcement inside, or you can select others that you don't want to, and then copy and paste it to each an individual element. 
again, a lot of the stuff out of the box is still quite uh, simple. Okay? You've still got to automate the process yourself. So, for example, if you've got a beam and say it's 50 metres long, it will put a bar in 50 metres long. You've still got to select the bar, reduce the size of yourself. Yes, there's some extensions to it, so I don't know if anyone uses those on subscription, um, but for me in the UK, they're absolutely useless because it puts a different bar mark number on. So, for example, if I put a, a stirrup in or a link, it should be a 51 code. It puts a stirrup 31 code. And generally, when I change it, it goes a bit crazy, and then I'm having to do a lot of things with it. So it's still quite an automated process, but it's, it's getting you know, into that and doing it yourself. To be honest, it's, good, it's a good way to check you've actually done it right. That's the way I look at it. You know, so you can test uh, making sure your laps are, are working and things like that. Anybody else? Wow. You're all interested in reinforcement. I can't believe it. it's uh, nearly half past five. People are still here. <laughs> I'd have been out the door. <laughs> well, if, and if anyone's got any further questions, please feel free to take my details. Obviously, if there's some information there for you. Um, hopefully, it's been informative. I know it's a fast pace because obviously it's only an hour. Um, but what I would say is just watch this space. You know, um, there's a lot more to come from Grey Tech on garden reinforcement. It's certainly an area that we're, we're looking at, not just for steel, uh, concrete, but we do uh, steel, reinforce, uh, steel, reinforce, steel connections and things like that. We've got other packages that do things like that. Um, but I say thanks for your time. Hopefully it's been useful. Um, and hopefully you have a nice evening. Thank you very much.